So uh, now I would like to invite to the floor um, Ms. Getam Tiwari, who is the Chair and Associate Professor of the Indian Institute of Technology. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And um, after listening to this very inspiring presentation from New York, I'd like to share the struggles of Delhi with you. And uh, Ricky asked me to talk about new green transport infrastructure. Uh, it is called Delhi Transit. Uh, it is the bus rapid transit system in Delhi. But let me just share with you that uh, since mid-90s, the government and a lot of civil society organizations became very concerned about pollution in Delhi, just air pollution, not really CO2. And there were a couple of very, uh, really good studies done. One of the study came out, the title of the study was The Slow Murder. And it showed that how Delhi population was suffering from uh, all kinds of cardiovascular and respiratory diseases because of poor air quality. So since mid-90s, I would, if I just want to give you a quick summary, uh, the government has had three major green transport strategies. And all started in mid-90s, which is like 97. They start, uh, ni this first plan was presented to Delhi government, to Central Pollution Control Board, was in 1996, where we showed that how street designs have to be changed if we are serious about both capacity and, climate and uh, emissions, harmful emissions from transport. The uh, 1997 study was slow murder, which showed that we have to do something about our really dirty fuel, the diesel fuel that we were using. And uh, so in 2001, the government ordered complete public transport fleet change to compress natural gas. That was the largest fleet change ever in the world. And of course, initially there were a lot of problems. The shrink, uh, the fleet size shrunk, uh, CNG infrastructure was not ready, and there was a lot of outcry in the media in the beginning. Public transport users were inconvenienced to quite a bit because there were not enough buses. But after one or two years, things settled down. And in 2004, Delhi government got the Clean City Award because of com changing complete public transport fleet to compress natural gas. In uh, 1997, we also started the construction of first underground, which the first phase was completed in 2001. And now we have 65 kilometers of metro system. So after all this, in 1996, when the Pollution Control Board released, released its data again, and Center for Science and Environment, which had actually was the major institution behind uh, change over to uh, compressed natural gas, shows that the benefits that one got initially by changing to compressed natural gas have been wiped out. The sheer number of increasing number of vehicles, which today the numbers are that we are adding about 960 vehicles per day. These are cars and two wheelers together. So if you, you can have a very green public transport fleet, you can have an um, underground system, you can have clean fuel, but the pollution is back. NOx levels have increased and all other, and of course, CO2. Nobody is measuring CO2 in Delhi right now. And you can see the street con congestion is back. All uh, road widening schemes, again, really have really, really temporary relief to congestion, if at all. So this is the logic why bus rapid transit system has to be done. The logic was given to the government in 1996. And in 2000, 2001, government started slightly serious about it, but the logic is that when you have congested roads and your public transport vehicles are stuck in congested streets, that's when you should take out, if you want to provide relief to people, take out people out of congestion. We cannot solve vehicular congestion problem, but there is a solution for people's congestion problem. And in the short term, it gives relief to everybody who uses buses. Our current modal share is very much in favor of public transport and walking and bicycling. By doing this, in future, we can retain these captive users and change them to choice users. 
So very quickly to give you a glimpse, we started from 1996, went through, I'm not going to read through all this, this is a long list, but just to give you since 1996, we went through all kinds of debates, discussions, various committees, and finally in 2008, the first six kilometer in Delhi started operating. Bus rapid transit system, a lot of activities were done as part of this project. The idea was to create a system. So it's not just about creating buses. It's completely creating a new infrastructure, new vehicular designs, uh, talking about in getting a new institutional structure in place, financial arrangements to run the system, capacity building with all kinds of stakeholders. And part of it is done, and part of it is in the process. So it's been a phased implementation. Lot of interesting experiments done with university and trying to uh, modify the designs. So apart from this, just doing the exclusive bus lanes, now Delhi government has gone and ordered uh, 5,000 new low floor buses. The, these have been manufactured first time in the country. The specifications were developed as part of this project. So not only the buses running in the corridor, but outside the uh, system also these new low-floor buses manufactured by Indian manufacturers have been ordered. So first uh, 14 kilometer was the first phase uh, of uh, BRT to be constructed. In, uh, 20, on 27 September 2006, the construction started. And in April 2008, it started operating. This is the beginning of the corridor. This is what it used to look like in 2005. And this is what it looks like in 2008. Exactly the same space, no land acquisition. The street has been completely reorganized now. You have exclusive bus lanes, special uh, parking places for three-wheelers, paratransit system. You have places for hawkers, pedestrians, and exclusive bicycle lanes. And a lot of detailing which had never existed in the country. So first time we have exclusive bicycle lanes. And all the bicyclists which were on the road getting mixed with traffic, have exclusive right of way now. We have specially designed pedestrian crossings and how people safely cross the road. Uh, complete infrastructure has been made as per universal design requirements, so it's a uh, disabled-friendly, barrier-free environment. Cycle tracks with a lot of little details to save them from, uh, to ensure their safety. Uh, uh, along the corridor, street designs for street vendors because they play a very important role, both for uh, preventing crime and also providing a service and making a very vibrant environment. So these details, and this is the most successful part of the design element, because the street hawkers are there on their own without policing. They have occupied their space. And lot of interesting detailing done for pedestrians, footpaths, resting places. So again, footpaths and uh, cycle lanes have been used, special designs for uh, bus stops to make it again disabled friendly and also increase the boarding and alighting time. And I think one of the most successful part of the project so far has been the corridor which experienced on an average 10 fatal accidents per year. During construction there were four fatal accidents. After the project started working initially there were fatal accidents only in the bus lane between pedestrians and buses. And after introducing more speed reducing devices in the bus lane also, since in 2009, we have finally achieved a zero death corridor. There have been no fatal accidents at all on this corridor. So this is a very interesting project because we have had with this multiple stakeholders, various, we've had different reactions from different people. And it depends who you ask you can guess that what the answer is going to be. Is it a successful project or is it a really bad idea? So initially, and I will show you just a glimpse of what, how the media reported this, but uh, a study and a survey was done, and this, was, uh, this survey was done in early 2009. First survey was done by a TV channel, NDTV, and then second survey was done by Center for Science and Environment. And this is the third survey, and all of them have had similar Results. The results show that bus commuters, in almost 90% bus commuters are extremely happy. 
Bus drivers are extremely happy. Pedestrians and bicyclists are extremely happy. And surprisingly, even 45% car users are happy. Not all of them, but still, they are all not very unhappy. If you look at the time savings, bus, bus users obviously have huge time savings because buses are not getting stuck in traffic jam. 35%, 14%, car users have 14% increase in travel. So there is net saving of about 20% in travel time. So we have a corridor with this kind of intervention, which is carrying 200 buses, about 15,000 persons in the maximum load sec section. It, it is carrying 1,500 bicycles in exclusive bicycle lanes, which are also being used by two-wheelers, because I don't know any design which can prevent two-wheelers and also encourage bicyclists at the same time. Buses are moving at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour, and car speed is 15 kilometers, which is not very different from any other corridor in Delhi. How does it compare internationally? If you look at initially, Delhi was, uh, if you just look at several other Asian cities which have implemented these projects. Initially, uh, the ridership was 6,500, but now we are recording a ridership of 15,000, even in this very small stretch. Uh, as far as speeds are concerned, initially buses are moving at 17 kilometers per hour, but now after doing other interventions, the buses are moving at 21 kilometers per hour, which compares very favorably with many other uh, such projects done in the world. So let us just try and understand that, is it a good project? Is government behind it? Are they going to do it? And how does the public perceive it? And most important thing, I think, as a person involved with this project, I have understood, we really have to define who is public in our democracy. Is it the bus users who are the majority of your commuters, people outside the car who are using the system, or is it 15% people who are in the car? Because this is the kind of media reports we got up to 2006 till the construction had not started. The media reporting was that why has the project been delayed? Why aren't we doing it? Once the construction starts, and it is clear that how car users are getting affected, then there was almost like a campaign for six months, targeting the designers personally. And one of the media report also, the caption read, Delhi experts order rape of Delhi roads, with our pictures on it. And this bus rapid transit system had almost like a column it appeared, calling it the big road trauma. And they consistently, the design details are misreported, despite actually sending them the design details, they were never published. Uh, inconveniences during construction time was highlighted, and uh, sensationalizing fatal accidents. And this one picture really explains a lot. This picture appeared in one of our major dailies, Times of India, and the caption reads, commuters are struck in traffic jam while the buses move freely. So we have to understand who are the commuters. So after this, of course, there have been many other, the government is a little nervous, should we go ahead and do it or not? But there have been movements like this now. People, pedestrians, and bicycles actually demanding that these corridors have to be increased. I'm going to rush through this because now I want to just uh, talk about the last few things, the last thing that the targets that Ricky had asked me to talk about. Delhi government and India, you know, has, does not have any targets for climate change. We don't want to have any targets for climate change because no matter what we do, our per capita emissions will be always be lower. And that is what our prime ministers stand. But Delhi government, interestingly enough, yesterday has submitted a climate change policy to the central government, which is a wish list of projects. They are talking about metro extension, bus corporatization, automatic uh, fare collection system, and f extension of flyovers, railover bridges, and street lighting. No mention of bicycles and zero carbon uh, emission vehicles at all. So the last slide is this a study which is going to be published in Lancet uh, before Copenhagen. And this study compares London and Delhi what happens under three different scenarios. And only thing I want to highlight, the two columns which show that 
per capita emissions in Delhi remain low. However, if we depend only on technological interventions, we will increase in 2030, we will increase our emissions by 447 percent compared to 1990. If we combine it with active transport scenario, which is your bicycle and walking, we will only increase it by 235 percent. And sustainable transport scenarios, combining the two, then we will reach little below 200 percent. So we have a lot of things we can do, but I'm not sure if the government is serious about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Um, uh, Tiwari. It was an excellent presentation. G you gave us a very good overview of the past and the future of the transport policies of um, New Delhi. And um, we hope that um, you will always consider that there will be common but differentiated responsibilities in our actions towards climate change and um, that we all were, live in the same planet. 